Hey, what's going on, guys? It's me, Train Man, and welcome back to a slightly longer than expected episode of, uh, trains. You know, the zombie train. Anyways, we are, actually, we, we do a few things today, and not the least of which is we have to nail down almost all of the terrain around here. I say almost because there may have been some sections I missed, but I think I'm okay. I think I'm all set. Although, it does need a little bit more detail, it needs a little bit more variation. And we're using the plateau tool here as sort of a, just a, get these things flat sort of tool. I alternatively could have used terrain tracks, I decided not to, because I just didn't feel like laying down the tracks for this one. Don't worry, I get to those later in the episode. You may notice already that this episode is slightly longer than your average episode, and the reason is, uh, that I'm advertising a new, uh, video enhancement medicate, no, actually, I. Uh, I just went a little long, I wasn't paying attention when I was working on the thing at the end of the video, which you'll see me get to. But this was me, you know, sort of taking this, this plateau that had gotten way out of hand and whittling it down immensely, of course. And then there's that, that uh, thing that we need to get to, and filling this in, and taking care of this as well. Now, here we use terrain tracks for a much... For a similar purpose to the one where we used the plateau tool over yonder. Uh, <clears throat> and, you know, either either way, you get you get a decent product, no matter which one you do, as long as you do it well. And I've found that, you know, sometimes sometimes I can really botch either of these. I, I don't know. I'm terrain tracks have their quirks, definitely. And the plateau tool does as well. The plateau tool can uh, can make or break an area, and the way it you know the way it operates, the way how it doesn't make particularly smooth uh, things, you know it can it can be troublesome. Which is why I like terrain tracks because you know okay this is going to be flat. So anyways, we've got this bridge that has been doing weird things to us. Apparently it's a track now. So there's that. Uh, it was it was a track. It was a track before. I didn't remember that it was. Anyways, take care of this. Hmm. Anyways, sorry. So doing the same thing with the plateau tool over here and just sort of making that, you know, saying that, okay, this is a slope. It is not a cliff. It's all right. And then I just made a little rise over there to, you know, whatever the heck. It needed some variation in, in topo topology. Topography. Whatever it is. So anyways, I found this bridge. I like this bridge. I was trying to figure out exactly where this this would go and where the roads would go. And last time, uh, we connected a road up um, through the section that Jader did, which it's done now. This is version 0.6.1 alpha. And we're stuck because it was an autosave. Anyways... When I got done with the autosave, I decided to adjust the bridge considerably. And there we go. And getting this to work was a little bit interesting because of the stuff that's on such a, um... Such a... It's, it's on a slope, so putting the road across it presents problems. But, you know, we'll get over that, and that's a crossing that needs to be ATLS'd as well. So whoever's going to come in and do the next round of ATLS. Uh, keep that one in mind. So I got this junction here. And right there. There it goes. I could have done a little bit differently as well. I was tempted to. I still might, because it'll channel vehicles the correct direction. Especially considering... Especially considering the way this is right here, which you'll see, you know, I, I drive it up here as a, as a road that's no larger than... or no larger or smaller, I should say, than any of the other ones. Eventually come back and use the same bridge. Uh, no, not that bridge. No, not that bridge. I wanted one without a road already on it. And so, no, not that bridge. <laughs> so I eventually found this bridge again and went, okay, this is the same one that we had, wasn't it? Adjust the ground so it's not floating. Then, you know, put our road across it and go, wait a minute, this is not the same bridge. The other bridge was way wider. 
And then eventually I realized, hey, wait a minute, this is a road that drives to a power plant and dead ends there. Why is it, uh, you know, why is it paved, first of all? And why is it in the condition that it's in? Well, then I decide, okay, that makes sense, so let's change it to gravel. So, we've still got lots of cars on it, but that's, that's a problem that's going to be... It would be resolved by altering the 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 orientation of that T intersection that we've got there. So I guess that's not bad. I could I could fix that pretty easily and we haven't even built any scenery around it, so it should be a piece of cake. Anyways, so I changed all that all that track to um whatchamacallit. I changed it to the CHN Wood 2, which is our default track, and then I go about paving this to, to make my life easier. So what I do is I block this all down to a, a flat area, and then I use this as a marker like I did down there, although I use a different texture just to make it, uh, just because it was what was on hand, really. And so now we're going to use this as our boundaries for a nice big sloping plain section. Yeah, terrain tracks. Anyways, this is the the terminating portion of this uh, section of video. It's terrain tracks and it's uh, big, big slopes. I don't actually end up using all the terrain tracks. I sort of sort them all out to the point where I think it's gonna be all right. And from there just say, whatever, this is gonna work. You know, as in as in making stuff large enough, making stuff large enough that it's uh, not too much of a pain for me to copy paste things. Um, and so, of course, we're doing this the alternate way. This is kind of funny. Uh, we're doing this the alternate way that we usually do. You know, it's very it's very typical that we're building up, and this time we're building down, and this created some problems. And the biggest problem was the fact that. I couldn't see my barrier, you know, like I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm using that texture as a barrier, and I couldn't see where the texture was when I have this giant, you know, this giant swath that I'm trying to, that I'm trying to paste. So it ends up taking me a couple of tries to get this, to get this down, and I, I carve out some pieces like that so I can see. And then it decides to autosave, so I was sitting there for a... I was sitting there for an amount of time. I uh, just locked up waiting for waiting for something interesting to happen. And then finally, I get back and I'm pasting that and you know, one more time. One more time we're going to celebrate. Oh, get rid of this. Sorry, it's from my my phone cord is less than foolproof, and so if I nudge my phone, then it will disconnect and reconnect to the computer and whatever. Anyways, so we did that, and what we just did, now, we're going to, I'm going to start working on something else here. I'm going to start working on signals, uh, because they need to be uh, replaced over the entire route, as we know. And so from here, it's going to be searchlights like we've done. Anyways. We also have to make sure they're facing the correct direction because that what was, uh, or you know, they have the proper D R um, D L D right diverging, left diverging, you know. Now that I understand what that means, basically it means that the main line is the light on the top. That's 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 the uh, practical explanation as for as to what has to go on there. Anyways, so we have this, and we're trying to sort this out. It goes through a lot of me placing trains, and then removing trains, and then placing signals, and anyways, I wanted to talk about the little piece of terrain that we built right at the end of that segment there, uh, which was created by just us raising the, uh, the ground to the track. Now, this isn't, you know, groundbreaking, but what we ended up making was this very large embankment, and I mean, it's not like it looks terrible, but we're going to have to texture that as such, you know. It's going to be in the woods, but it's going to be one of those things where you look out the windows of the train, 
and not realize you're actually just seeing the top halves of trees. You know, a lot of the time, at least I'll be driving down the highway and I'll look and I'll see, uh, you know, I'll say, okay, there's woods out there, but you don't understand that it's not just woods that drop into woods. You know, the, the highway's up on an embankment. That's why it's called a highway. That's literally why it's called that. Anyways, so here we are uh, coming into wherever this place is. Oh, that's right, no, no, this isn't a place. This is the middle of the route. Um, this is the middle of the route where Jader slapped a little grain thing, which is going to be interesting to get to for any sort of train. Sorry, I thumped the desk there a little bit. And... Yeah. Alright, so, once again, replacing signals. I want to get this route runnable by, you know, Christmas time, maybe? I don't know. But it, it needs to just be all reset. It needs to be put back together. Once I get signals out there, it'll be... Well, it'll be workable, I guess. So, anyways. What I need to do is I need to see how big the dependency pack is for this route so far. Uh, uh, the dependency pack for Douglas alone was 900 and some megabytes. So, almost a gig. And that will have to be... Uh, that will have to accompany the route if you don't have a first-class ticket. Because other than that, it's going to be really damn difficult to, to get this stuff... to get this stuff around. Anyways. Yeah, having a first-class ticket is almost mandatory for getting this route, because the amount of stuff that is included with it is, is mind-boggling. So here's another autosave. I was doing the signaling around here and I realized the track work in Albany is really kind of nuts. And I don't necessarily mean that in a bad way. I just mean that in this in this city here, uh, it went through a couple of different iterations and each one has gotten stranger than the last. And me placing these signals is really, you know, I'm sort of, you know, I'm just throwing, throwing mud at the wall seeing what sticks, basically. I'm, I'm just going to place these signals where I feel like they ought to be, and that's how this is going to work. And also, I've been nudging around these, um... I'm, I've been nudging around these, these speed signs to correspond with the signals, so we don't have any speed signs hiding directly behind signals. I've also been more careful to put signals on areas where you can see them as you're approaching, and to also use more of these, you know, one-way signals that don't necessarily have, a, have trouble. So, putting a three-track signal bridge over this was proving difficult, so I put a four-track one instead. And that meant one of the legs was in the yard, but what it also meant was that I could just adjust some things and actually have that leg not intersecting anything, which is nice. And so we have three tracks of signals there. And then we have some more signals down here. You know, call me overkill with the signals, but I think, based on what's happened previously... It was much better for me to have more than less. Anyways, now we're back between Troy and Sugar Creek, and what we were doing here is I was trying to see if I could salvage the fact that these gradients here, these gradients here are actually too steep. Uh, the route is supposed to be limited to 1.5%. Coming out of Sugar Creek, you have, uh, you know, maybe a quarter mile to a half mile of... Uh, 1.9%, and that was that was doing in some people. So basically it was, you know, I was going to see if I could fix that. Turns out, could not. So that area is going to be due for a redo sometime soon. Yeah. Anyways, then we have this area. I finally decided to come through and finish this out. As you will notice by the end of this, none of the tracks have industries on them, although, no, I did I did throw that in a multiple industry. Um, there are a couple of industries with industries built in, if that makes any sense to you guys. But the point is, it's the kind of thing where it's, you know, it's kind of, it's not done yet, but it looks better than it did before. This is, of course, the last thing of the episode. This is what I get sidetracked doing. I'm really just trying to make whole use of this space here, which you'll notice is really not 
well shaped for an industrial uh, switching area, especially with uh, with the way the main line is, you know, in respect to it in mind. Now we've got we've got plenty of whatnot here, though. We've got plenty of room. We've got uh, whatever. It could make an interesting little switching puzzle, although I might want to add even more random little stuff. I don't know what this place is going to be, but I can't. I keep finding things that are way too modern. Although that is nice, so I kept that, and I wanted to have like an oil drop off in here somewhere. So that was that was something I got to. I just realized something else I could put in here. I don't know. I've got to figure out what the buildings are going to be after I actually have all the buildings. Because right now there's still some things missing. There's still some, like... And I think I stumbled upon something absolutely massive. That's not a warehouse. It says it's a warehouse. It's definitely not a warehouse. You'll see the you'll see the giant thing in a second. I was just scrolling through and looking for what could be what. And I go, what is this? And immediately get get stuck on it. So we're going to be using that. And I put that there, and I put the building that we were working on back over by this double track instead, and then go get a giant oil tank, because this is going to be a place to unload oil. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a little bit of extra length due to me getting sidetracked and having a little bit of extra time. So yeah, we get one of these guys, which I've never used this before, but, you know, because it's going to be an oil unloader. Train man out! Thank <laughs> you.